What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we're going to be going over a guide on how to kind of optimally kill the Void Arc bosses. So this is one of the toughest PvE content out there, and because it's literally PvE content where you have a giant boss monster you're trying to defeat, but the, the rounds are limited to about six rounds of combat, mainly due to the... The fact that the boss just kind of one shots no matter who is alive once that point comes so what we're going to do today is show you how to optimally fight um honestly the arc boss is pretty easy all the way up until about maybe sector four uh sector four five and six of course five and six are very difficult being able to make sure you kill all the void bosses on every single month of the void arc is going to be a lot of extra resources so this is going to show you pretty much a very optimal setup most optimal way to run it this guide is by miguel he is one of the greatest uh one of the greatest uh helpers i would say on discord on reddit you've probably seen a lot of his guides in the past as well this one is another one and this one is really really great so make sure you guys thank miguel and let's jump right into it All right, first off, let's jump into it. Let's take a look at the actual guide that he made. Uh, I always like the layout he has, and he always has the nice images, image files and everything too. So essentially, this entire guide is going to re revolve around Ithqua. Ithqua is probably the best PvE damage dealer in the game, even like compared to Transcendence Heroes, all those things. She just does insane amounts of damage, even without the Delacium Army. So if you're thinking this is going to be a Delacium Army setup, you wouldn't be further from the truth. It is very, very different. But essentially, you are going to be running Ithaca with five support heroes. You're going to run her with enables 2-2, two, 3-2-2. Two, two, two. So that means you're running her full out attack with lethal, lethal fight back, purify, and unbending will. Uh, as far as a stone goes, the most optimal one is a holy damage attack attack stone. As far as gearing goes, you're going to want to run full gear setup. Now, there are some options for artifacts. Of course, a Radiant plus Antlers is definitely going to be the strongest. We all know Antlers Cane is the most powerful PvE damage dealing artifact in the game, being that it keeps ramping your damage up more and more every single round. Now, granted, there's only about six rounds of combat, but still, that's damage you wouldn't normally have. If you do have the Silent Crescent skin, that would be better. Of course, more damage is going to be the best option. Uh, typically, with the correct supports, she will already be at 100% crit rate. But if for some reason you don't or you don't have an Antler's Cane, an, up, an upgraded Antler's Cane, you can get away with using an upgraded Punisher. Of course, Splendid would be optimal, but hey, not everybody has a perfect Splendid Punisher. Although a lot of people are because they are building ticks, but... Uh, we'll kind of go over a little bit more in this guide right here. So this guide is basically a way to maximize the damage to the Void Lord bosses. Uh, we'll jump in game at the end here and I'll show you pretty much the resources you could be missing out on by not getting it clear. This is the one part of the game where Ithqua does have extreme value in the very late game. Ithqua is a very interesting hero where she's very good early game. She's decent mid game and then she falls off completely towards the end game. Except for this one game mode and Delacium armies. Um, essentially, this whole entire setup is going to be based around the correct support heroes to make sure that she can do damage and not be stunned because as you know, the boss does uh, counter attacks. He has a chance to stun. It's a lot of damage coming in. As far as guild tech goes, you are going to want to go 30 of 30 and anti-warrior in your assassin tree mainly because well the void lord is a warrior you want to minimize that damage as much as possible um and honestly yeah like it says here you you kind of want to do anti-warrior on every class possible because we're going to have priests in this lineup we're going to have assassins in this lineup uh try to get that anti-warrior 30 of 30 on all of them you should be kind of doing that anyway just because of pvp but again this is more for like the end game people here the main strategy here, the Void Lord will counterattack every time he gets hit. And he actually does quite a bit of damage with that. Think of King Barton on not even steroids, on like God tier steroids. Um, moreover, that counterattack can also stun your team. So the point of this setup here is mainly going to be to not have your 
heroes attack but maybe the first round maybe not even the first round there's a couple keys here and a lot of it's going to come down to speed but we will jump into that a little bit later the strategy is about minimizing the number of times your support heroes attack the boss while still counting on their support abilities kind of like we just said we don't want the we don't want the boss continuously counterattacking. that would be very very bad uh, we are going to run heroes such as Drake and Rogans without the E3 enable purify. Why? Because we actually want them to stay stunned. If they are stunned, they are still providing the buffs we're looking for. For Drake, he's applying that defense down, which is removing all the defenses the boss has. And Rogans are just there for that end of round, beginning of round, buffing of attack, crit, all those fun things. Uh, we just don't want the boss to counterattack at all besides Ithqua hitting the boss. Um, on the other hand, though, uh, heroes like Olivia or Heartwatcher should be able to cast their abilities because you want them to get their abilities off. Olivia is going to be great because she's going to put up Fairy Guard on your team. She's also going to shrink the boss, which is going to lower the incoming damage. So, it's, yes, it's, it's proccing a counterattack, but that shrink is actually going to allow Ithaca to do more damage while also take less damage. Uh, there are some people that are using Heartwatcher as well. Not optimal i don't think but if you need to you can additionally we want to set our team speed so that ithqua attacks before the drake and the rogan so that they are stunned in round one and they don't get an attack off so i think the most important part is uh is making sure ithqua's speed is exactly right because you also don't want her to be faster than the olivia olivia you want to go first so that she gets that minimize she gets that damage reduction plus damage boost as far as team setup goes, let's move this to about right here. Uh, so this is what Miguel has come up with as the most optimal setup he has used so far. There's a big, big issue of having like an E5 Ignis. If you have just a 10 star Ignis, that is enough on death to give Ithaqua the 100% control immunity, which is probably one of the biggest parts here because if she's not, if she's if she's crowd controlled she's not doing any damage you need to make sure she is not getting stunned this entire combat again you can see the speeds is what he used here you want a v0 olivia in the front row candy bar is perfect because of course it's a stun you just need a baseline candy bar to make sure she does not get stunned uh, otherwise a magic stone sword will work just fine you can use either a phoenix or a wolf here i would say the wolf is better because well the wolf bleed counts for ithqua's bleed so you have a 100 percent uptime on that wolf bleed not bad whereas the phoenix you're gonna have it fall off for one or two rounds towards the end which isn't great v1 rogan is what he used as well i don't know if that's completely necessary but of course you want to put all your void imprints into the ithqua since she's the damage dealer and as you see here she is going to go second because even though she has the same speed as the rogan if you're further up in the lineup the closer to the front line you will go first because if everybody on your team has the exact same speed it goes in order from slot one two three four five six and so on and so forth so that's something to remember again you don't want drakes and rogans to have purify you want essentially olivia and or ithaqua stunning the rest of your team and of course a couple counter attacks will then also proc that suicide ignis to give 100 control immunity to ithaqua as well as energy so that's a really good setup ithaqua goes before v1 rogan because of her position exactly what we talked about the two rogans and drake are built as tanky as possible olivia v2 is a great addition to your team so yes building your team very tanky is going to be really important for your rogans and pretty much everybody even the even the olivia everybody but ithaqua needs to be built straight up tanky because yes olivia and ithaqua will always be proccing those counter attacks so you want them to live long enough he did put a little bit of an afterward here let's see if we can fit it all on the same thing here you can see his discord and his uh actually yeah you can see his discord profile down the bottom here as well i think you guys can see everything 
there are many players succeeding with different supports around Ithqua, but of course, Ithqua is that cornerstone of this build. Namely, Scarlet Queen and Heart Watchers are viable supports for Ithqua as well. You have several dimensions to adjust the speed of all your heroes to minimize the risk your Ithqua dies before fulfilling her damage. Treasure, skin, void imprints, artifacts. Additionally, if by the end of the month arc, you need some damage boost, you can take all your void imprints, dump that into a V4 Ithaqua and Olivia for the extra damage. Because of course, Olivia's Fairy Guard does some pretty good damage based on Ithaqua's attack. It can actually do pretty good. Um, in this guide, I feature my preferred lineup because I personally think capitalizing on the stun by using supports without Purify with passive skills makes more sense in context. I would agree. I'm not a fan of the Heart Watcher build um maybe the queen maybe putting that queen in there if you have a scarlet queen instead of one of the rogans could be good as well but there's a lot of cool things coming from this guide so hopefully this helped you guys out if you do need if you do need help definitely jump on by this link down the very bottom here discord.gg slash idle heroes that is the official idle heroes discord it is an amazing group of people over there. I spent a lot of time over there just trying to learn because, I mean, heck, you know me. I do very things. I don't necessarily know everything that's the right way to do it, but there's a lot of people on that Discord that know a million times more than what we know. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Hopefully you guys can learn something. Uh, here's the optimal setup. Let me know if you guys use anything else, and I'll see you guys next time.